Hello. I'm on the air. <laughs> no one can stop me. I'm going all the way up. That's right, baby. We're going all the way up. Now, uh, I, I was reading, because uh, this got stimulated by uh, an OMM winner, actually. He likes to fly. And he completed 160-something kilometers in a march. Well, the year I was born. And as he says, he, he was forced into retirement the, the next year in 1987. Ooh, titties. <laughs> um, you know... Uh, Okay, let's go on to this. So again, today I did my did my walk. Well, did my muck march, and you know it gets, it's a slog, you know, and I don't like putting fucking footprints into the mud, and because like when I go through there, um, when I'm riding my bike, then I have to deal with all these ruts and stuff like that. It's it's gross. It's it's really frustrating. It doesn't make for um, a good experience, and. Um, not that this has anything to do with that other gentleman, the, the, the Canadian. Um, but, you know, the walk, the long walk is, uh, is just a combination of a lot of mental testing. And, um, you know, I've tested myself a lot of ways in my own life trying to achieve things um, with the opportunities that were presented to me in the least amount of time in the best best fashion best uh, best quality as possible uh or just the the outstanding authenticity of something and to achieve um to achieve something in life you know say like this year or the starfighter or this one here which is a high flying aircraft <laughs> Anyways, and, and if I'm going to have these things in my possession or close to me that are emblematic and symbolic of, of these, these men um, for, for whom I have respect for, uh, because, you know, obviously you don't get anywhere, you don't get, you don't get any love without getting love, and, you know, I'm not here to be a, boot, a bootlicker by any means, I'm here uh, in this respect to, to, uh, to learn and honor the history and then communicate that to future generations. Um, because, you know, um, I took control, I believe, I believe I took control in this, this situation where no one else was able to, and I didn't even have the training to do it. It's just more or less, okay, now I have to deal with it and I don't have a choice about it. Otherwise I won't survive. Um, and that's how it is with 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 the selection process. You know, again, the the, the Delta Force in the states is uh, so. This is off of We Are the Mighty, and the this was updated on September twenty eighth, two thousand twenty three. Uh, what is the Delta Force long walk? And uh, it, it, as I've said before, it uh, let's see. No announced distance, no announced end time, and no encouragement. If they can complete this grueling ruck march, they will face the selection board and possibly join the unit. If they fall short, they go home. Eh, you know what? They, I, I know I know this for certain that young people, they want this. They want a, a pass, fail, or, or mark. They want to be evaluated. Or, or not, they don't want pass, fail. They want, they want, want to be evaluated. Um, there's just too much wishy-washy uh, timey wimey bullshit, you know, subject subjectivity in the culture because that was used um, to take down through uh, psychotic and distrustful tactics, uh, charlatans and, uh, you know, smoke and mirror sort of stuff um, to destroy the culture from within uh, with the stuff that we love. Right, Otis Huxley will be destroyed by the things that we love. And the gluttony of uh, a gluttony of wealth, right? We become burnt out by all the beautiful things and the ease of convenience and so on and so forth. 
And you know, so the so stuff I'm doing or I, I, I do on, on a regular basis is a reminder to myself that I could be walking from here to the freaking uh, Vancouver instead of driving. And that would take me months and months and months and months to do. And, but we don't, we don't think about the convenience. We think about the inconvenience of not having a vehicle. And the, all these, these things, these uh, conveniences of life, right? And um, you, I've seen, you see pictures online, you know, and people in the military while they're out in the fields and they, they're on deployment, they're sleeping on the ground, you know, just like, uh, like immigrants or Japanese people. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a reality check, right? Because you go up there, you don't have these things. You don't, you, you can't just yell out, Hey bitch, where's my fucking Dr. Pepper? You know, like, uh, give me my fucking Dr. Pepper. You know, God damn it. <laughs> I'm not going to do the full, uh, boomer Gus here. Um, and, uh, you know, this is, this is what determines these tests of, of physical prowess, which... You know, again, a fighting mind, body, and spirit all together, and you can't have, you can't have too many con contradicting voices, especially a civilian committee telling the military what to do, right? And this is why I understand why there's a conflict between the upper and the lower uh, command structure, uh, as it is with uh, emblematic of other other organizations and the same things that erode civilian incorporations or companies is the same thing that erodes and destroys uh, any kind of military unit uh, and again these tactics that were used uh, by by outside influences and by uh, you know the let's say the uh, I'm forgetting here. Uh, the mitzvah to Zakada. So it refers to the religious obligation to do what is right and just in Judaism. And that even extends to Jewish philanthropy. And then also the enabling of uh frankly um gay uh individuals and then you know this uh, christianity is not any any less guilty uh because I, I know that islam is not very forgiving of homosexuality or 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 deviancy but the the mistrust that happens is uh you know and then the contempt the, the deceit and then the, the exploitation, because when people rise to a position of their incompetence, um, especially when they didn't have power before in their lives, and all of a sudden they have absolute power over a result of, of someone's life that we, or a decision that is life-changing, and they recognize that it is life-changing, or that that person is dependent and you hold that person's life in, in your hands, and then they go and fuck with you anyway, right? Now that, that... That's a punishable offense. That's a total abuse of power. And I don't like that. You know, this is why um, the, the 13 principles, uh, or not principles, the, the laws, they're laws, right? Uh, the dirty dozen. They might as well be laws. The, 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 law, of the dirt, law of the dirty dozen, dirt, break baker's dirty dozen. If you don't follow through with these things, you are liable to be found guilty of negligence, incompetence, or maliciousness. We can't run from um, our actions anymore because every, as I've said in other videos within the history of propaganda, every one of our actions and every one of us as a, as a person is responsible at some point in their lives for harming someone uh, directly or indirectly or uh, guilty of manslaughter or murder. Every single one of us, whether it's it, it, our, because of something that we did or we did not do. And this is the point of justice, is the inquiry. And that's why we have trials and we have the whole court system. But frankly, again, um, the cultural Marxism infected and destroyed um, the, the rubrics by which these tests of, of uh, 
of dignity, quite frankly, and of status, right? Trying to tear down and undermine uh, masculinity and alpha men, which Delta Force is full of, uh, chock full of, of alpha men, some of the smartest, some of the, of the most physically strong, and the most determined and disciplined people in the world. And we should all try to be like that in our own lives, whatever capacity it is. And, and you know, they, they, don't, they don't suffer bullshit. And I wouldn't either. And I'm not saying this to, to get on my knees and, and give you guys fellatio, okay? Frankly, I'd probably puke all over your dick. Okay, because religious belief systems and the and, and, and we have conflicts, right? Because uh, I have two I have two two videos open here, which I added to the history of propaganda, volume five, which is Christian Zionism, and then of uh, uh, the hidden history of Zionism from a Jewish person, Efron Flavinov, Flavinov, yeah, and as far as I can tell, they're very they're they're good they're good sources. Um, and talking about the uh, Kabbalah, Kabbalah means family, if I remember, remember correctly, right? All right, es esoteric method, discipline, and school of thought in Judaism. Jewish mysticism, that's right. Uh, which is in, in, in line uh, and similar to what would be Orthodox Christianity, Eastern tradition. Okay, um, so how does how does this loop back? Well, you know, religious conviction is a reason for for war and for conflict, and uh, you know, Delta Force is specifically uh, tailored to take on um, take on terrorism or counter terrorist unit. Okay, so if we're gonna read about this for a little a little bit for a background. Until I get to the punchline, which I think is hilarious. Um, okay, so and it was stood up in 1977 uh, by Colonel Charles A. Beckwith, a special forces leader who had previously served as an exchange officer for the 22 SAS. Uh, so unsurprisingly, Beckwith got the nod to lead the unit he had helped pitch, and looked to the SAS itself for methods to win out, out win out. Or say to win out those who might not be resolute at a key moment in a, in battle and embrace their stress event, a superhuman ruck march. Um, yeah, you know what? You're, you're, there's going to be points in time with within sleep deprivation, you start hallucinating, and the difference between someone who's mentally stable and someone who's me mentally unstable is whether or not they can continue with a simple task. Right? Or even a more complex task, say like driving. Devin slept for three days, put him behind the wheel. See how he does. It wasn't an insane distance, just 74 kilometers or 40 miles. That's certainly further than most soldiers will ever carry a wreck, but not, but not an eye-watering number. Um, SAS can... SAS candidates conducted this training at the end of what were already grueling weeks of training, and on the day of the final march, they were woken up early to start it. Uh, the real mind game was not telling the candidates how far they had to go or how far they had already gone. They were just told to ruck march to a set point that could be miles distant. Then a cadre member at that point would give them a new point, and this would continue until the candidate had marched the full distance. So, you know, save the drama for your mama, okay? Yeah, they take control and when there's no one else to do it or something bad happens. And the, the loss of life could, could uh, you know, we would ever ha forever have to live with it. And to, I'd rather die in action, and frankly, and I, this is an old warrior's mentality, is I'd rather die in, on the battlefield than in my bed. Uh, that, that, that reminds me of something I said in, in other videos. You know, I had a vision of dying on the battlefield. Uh, and then I, I woke up and I said, no. Uh, not for Sleepy Joe, not for Trudeau, not for uh, Macron or Zelensky. You know, uh, there's, there's just people out there that you don't 
want to fight for because they don't know exactly what they're fighting for either. And this is where the PTSD happens. Is right? You have this conflict uh, between um, what you were told and then the reality of things. And the conflict between them is just like, okay, so I killed someone. This is not an admission of guilt, by the way. Uh, so in this scenario, um, I killed someone. And now I don't know why I killed them. They pointed a gun at me because they were, they, you know, and you go through this, this reasoning, reason, uh, a process of reason to, to come to down, down to the, to being, you know, settled and, um, at rest. You're no longer at fighting yourself for having made the choice to save yourself in that, that position where other people decide you. Because no matter what, we all die. Memento mori. And that, that relates to like the the cyberpunk thing, right? The the the, the legends of cyberpunk are, are 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 not remembered by what they did in their lives, but by how they died and how they went out, right? This is not to discredit what what I'm going to read next, um, but the just you know, the gist of it is is that you know life is a long long walk. It's a very long walk. It's a lot longer and, and, and paradoxical. It's a lot shorter than you think it is. Because by the time that you get to that point, right, it's like you died. You're like, oh, crap, what am I going to do next? And now, now this fucking officer is telling me I got to go another 15 miles? Fuck this shit. Right? That's what they're trying to figure out. And this is where I, I've emphasized before that where the, the testing is, is, was, was and is an issue um, previously, uh, say, with the allowance of women to be on the front line as soldiers. Now, there's a lot of women out there who be like, oh, I can be a soldier, I can be a soldier. Mm, okay. I want to see a woman complete uh, Delta Force uh, operator school. And I want to see her do it without any assistance. Just, that's it. If you pass the test, you pass the test. You know the you know, no, equal outcome or say equal equal uh, unequal opportunity and equal outcome or whatever it is a double speak you know equal opportunity not equal outcome fucking total bullshit total fucking bullshit but sometimes it comes down to whether or not you're just a likable person. Now, this guy, I'm looking at his photo, he seems like a likable person. He looks like he's got that, that, that permanent in his photo. He's trying to smile, but half is like he got Bell's palsy or something like that. Uh, or he's just shot so many, so many rounds that his face doesn't smile on that side anymore. Yeah, he's right-handed. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so this is about next thing. Uh, Lieutenant General Lawson Magruder. Magruber. <laughs> uh, not not. It's not about Lawson. Uh, it's about Bar Bargewell. Right, and he's talking about how he cut his teeth. Uh, with uh, seven six two RPD. So you know he had he had a very storied career in Vietnam. A DS DSC Distinguished Service Cross. 
Yeah, okay, so yeah, you got hit in the face with an AK. And he still went, he still kept going. You take a fucking bullet to the face and still keep going, that's... <laughs> Holy shit, man. Holy fuck. And, okay, so, but the, the funniest part is that, okay, you never know how, how it's going to end, right? And you shouldn't spend a lot of time thinking about how your, your life is going to end. Um, you, you, more concentration on how you're living today, right? Carpe, de, carpe diem. And, you know, again, this is, this is one of this, the pieces of symbology, especially you, you watching me uh, pick up the pieces of, of uh, the fragments, you know, because my life is, it was so all scattered and I was just, you know, 110% as, as much as I can trying to concentrate on, on, on working on airplanes across the country, right? And I have to pack everything up in, into my car and, and then drive by myself. And my story is not unique. It's not. It's zero support, other than the, other than you know the uh, the sweat of my brow, and the beat of my heart, in a lot of cases. And the car was com is almost completely maintained and put together by me. So, ain't no one else to blame out there except yourself. And on the long march of life, got to cut through the bullshit. Or don't wield a knife. I think that's a good message. Yeah. Now the, the comedy is, of course, you know, he, he lived to be 72 years old, right? Survive all that shit. And he was killed on April 29th, 2019. <laughs> <laughs> and his, he got killed by his lawnmower. <laughs> oh my goodness. You know, that's that's a little embarrassing to be killed by your lawnmower. Um, <laughs> it is. But, you know, I bet he's laughing up there in heaven or wherever he believes, whatever religion that he believed. Um, and, there, you know, it's, it's, it's hilarious. It's funny. It's, it's funny because of the irony that this guy was so unkillable. Um, and it's, or rather so hard to kill and then he gets taken out by a lawnmower. <laughs> yeah, you gotta have some humor and gallows humor is, is definitely a part of military culture as, as is burn culture, quite frankly. But, you know, people take it too far and this is where the toxicity happens, but the toxicity happens because of burnout. And it, it happens because of, uh, you know, people, again, the different psychological principles. And, of course, the last remaining reason is because they're just not that smart. Okay. Well, that's about it, right? So all you Delta Force guys here, I know you're going to laugh at this knife because if you look it up, you know, the U.S. Air Force and Delta Force on the same thing. These, these Parker cut, cut co knives. Um, I've only been able to find uh, five of them, including this, this knife here. And I, I know there's other ones out there uh, because it would have been, this would have been uh, produced on, on a larger scale. Uh, but so, you know, uh, since, since I was, uh, you know, I, I, I know because, well, because of the, the SAS badges and stuff like that, um, that I was around people that wanted me to try harder and to be part of an elite unit, whatever, whatever it was. Uh, but my resistance to how other people, to other people's ideas of what was good for me is what has allowed me to survive. Right, the the confidence when you, again when you're out there, when you're able able to to pierce through, right, pierce through to the other side uh, of of life, right, to the you start realizing how much power we actually have as individuals.
And, and like, again, this is scary. It's scary to hold a weapon in your hand. At least to some people. But in the end, we are the weapon. Yeah, I think that's good enough. I just hope I don't get taken out by a lawnmower. <laughs>